because who wants to say there was, there was melodynes, you know? One of my sayings is, I'm going to melodyne your ass. Well, it started, I was a sort of a tape up and assistant in the studio. Um, did a lot of programming, um, which, you know, it sort of slowly evolved into programming. I had synthesizers at home. I wanted to be an engineer originally. Um, ended up doing more programming. And that sort of led to production and inevitably led to songwriting because he was actually coming up with bass lines and chords for songs as he was programming them. Um, so that kind of just fell into it, really. It wasn't a big plan. Oh, quite a few different artists, all from sort of the older electro -y Gary Newman stuff to more sort of off the wall Tori Amos tracks, as well as a lot of remixes for a lot of bands from U2 to Korn. So, quite a wide spectrum. Finished the Enter Shikari album, Common Dreads, last year, um, towards the end of last year, and at the moment working with Hard Fire, their third album, studio album. Um, I've got a couple of other new artists I'm going to be working with after that that I saw at a festival recently, on a White Festival. Um, a lot of writing, still doing a lot of writing. I'm a universal, signed to Universal Publishing, so I do a lot of writing, co-writes. Um, and I've got a small band that, that we write mainly stuff for, for films, actually. It's kind of a kind of dark, Depeche Mode-esque kind of gritty band, and, and we do a lot of stuff that gets used on film. So. I did Swordfish quite a while ago, which was really good fun. That was a real big film. Um, and there's a film I did called uh, Steel, which I composed myself all the score. Um, and that's on that's constantly on BBC One, <laughs> uh, which is quite interesting. And that was a really good film. That's kind of a um, that was a straight to DVD film, but that was um, Jason Scott Scott Lee. Oh no, it's Time Cop. I did a track film called Time Cop with Jason Scott Lee as well. Um, but that was a both those were good because they're both action, so really cool, you know, to get everything from going to Prague to do the strings, do the whole 60-piece string orchestra, and then it switches from that to a breakbeat track to something that sounds a bit more like Nine Inch now, so I really like the film, the film uh, side of things. It didn't start out as a big theme tune, it started out as quite a cool club track. In fact, I come up with the idea, that was like version three, the, the original idea was done in um, a remake, not a very good remake, of one of my favourite films, Get Carter. And when Sylvester Stallone is getting a pounding by Mickey Rourke, I come up with a track for that, which was named Descent. And if you listen to that, listen to Big Brother, they're almost identical. Um, the start of Big Brother really was coming up with a sound that is the distinctive part of it. Um, and often that's the idea with me, I come up with like a really cool beat or bass line. And it, it, and it will evolve around a good sound or some vibe that's going on rather than sitting down with a piano and just doing it that way. But Big Brother originally was, was um, uh, a 12 minute long track and the bit you hear on the telly go over and over and over driving you mad, it, was, it only happens three, three times in 12 minutes. It's a build to that point and then it drops. So it was like a big sort of epic trance, deep house in places track. Um, they've snipped it all up and made it sound like a pop song, which I don't mind, I suppose, but it wasn't written like that. It's a mixture of things. I, th I think for like most people, it's um, I've worked with people before that have heard tracks they like and they want to get that sound. I did a, the very first video game um, release for the 360. Um, was a guy who just heard Ready, Ready Steady Go. It was one of my tracks, quite a big track um, in films and stuff. And he wanted he wanted his stuff to sound more like that. So that was one reason. And the other reason can be just sort of word of mouth, like, um, you know, working with Ed Shikari, they really enjoyed it. Atlantic Records like the, you know, the, the result and the next thing is you get hard fire. So, you know, and sometimes they're fans, sometimes they just like the way you work. Funny enough, I, I heard about it before it was out. I beat a test for Pro Tools and um, I was asked, oh, I can't remember years, a long, long time ago to get involved in the Melodyne beta testing. I didn't opt to be in it because I, I, I tend not to tune a lot of things, as I say, so I didn't think I'd, I'd you know, be a really good tester for them. I don't want to take too much stuff on for testing. So I heard about it years ago, and the real thing that, that brought it me to using it was it's just a quicker graphic way to 
to have things right but not perfectly in tune sometimes you know obviously it can tune them perfectly so in the last sort of five years i've been using it in pro tools and recently with the dna that it's really become you know more used a lot more used the new dna version has become you know a it's the only thing that can do it but um it's vital um as a as a backup really uh and you can tune vocals with it. Uh, I mean, I'm not a great big fan of everything being tuned, um, to be honest. But the good thing on Melodyne is that you don't need, as you'll, you'll see, you don't need to tune it exactly 440 centre pitch on a note. You can still have the, the singers, you know, sharp and flat and moving around. So it still sounds natural. You might just fix a mistake. That's, that's a really good vocal take and there's a couple of bad notes. You can fix them without touching the ones that might be off but sound great so um, that's one of the main things um, is to try and keep it sounding unfixed really I don't want everything to be like a pop record um, and then the next the next great thing on Melodyne is the the DNA feature where it splits the notes across a chord um, and that can be really interesting it can be great for writing but it can also be great if you know you need an end chord and there wasn't a last chord played on a, on a chorus you can just take the chord before copy it across, change the notes and resolve it. So really, really, really clever. Quantizing, um, again, I'm not a massive fan of quantizing, but if you need to do it, it's really quick. I would say it's changed the way you're stuck with something if, if there's a mistake, that's what it is. So it's kind of, it's an, it's an odd tool really, because it, 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 in some ways, People don't want, want, you know, artists may not want you to know, you know, people to know you've used it, which, which gives it a kind of cloak and dagger effect, you know, because who wants to say there was, there was melodynes, you know. One of my sayings is, oh, I'm going to melodyne your ass and, and, you know, and normally get a laugh out of it, so if it's a singer. But I, I, it's changed, it's changed the, the, the process to being, you're stuck. You've done something, you need to change a note and you're stuck. And what you're going to do? You're going to get, you know, get the player back. You're going to try and redo it. Can't get the sound. So it's just opened that door, and it's made it almost like MIDI notes now, which is great. So you know, you end up, we just stick down the bass line, and you can look at it like a MIDI note and change it. And I'm a massive fan of recording audio, even synthesizers, straight as audio. Forget MIDI. Um, so it, it's added a, another dimension. The combination of that and being able to quantize in it and quantize in Pro Tools means that you can actually now print MIDI. Uh, audio, sorry, no MIDI, and um, you know, and still manipulate it, which is great.